someone else. An auto accident that almost changed the world. I'm Jim Fugate, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. Every once in a while, a critical event occurs. Something happens, and the possible outcomes, well, they're thrown into the air to decide how history will be written. At the close of this episode, you'll find out how this true story ended. It was September 13th, 1931. Having been invited for a late visit, a British gentleman was traveling by cab to an old friend's New York City apartment. It was about 10.30, the streets were wet, and the traffic was light, at least for New York. The man had never been to his friend's apartment before. As soon as the cab arrived on the right block, the Brit decided to exit the cab. He figured it would be faster to navigate the final bit on foot. He paid the driver and began to look for the address. He located the building just across the street. Being a visitor from London, he was accustomed to navigating a big city with its traffic. But perhaps for a moment, he forgot he wasn't in London. Where cars travel on the opposite side of the road? And in the darkness, he made a serious miscalculation. He found himself halfway across the street and noticed a set of headlights approaching from the right. Thinking like it read, he instinctively believed he was clear, expecting the car to pass behind him. Without a second thought, he continued to cross the street, stepping forward directly into the path of the oncoming car. There was a sudden, violent, jarring impact across his thighs and forehead. Then, after flying through the air for a moment, he found himself on the ground, in a heap, and unable to. The police officer arrived quickly, and it was decided to lift the injured man gingerly off the road and into another taxi, which quickly whisked him to a nearby hospital. The doctors found several broken bones, and both of his shoulders were dislocated. He had narrowly escaped death. In a written and detailed account of the accident, this 57-year-old man pondered why he hadn't died. He had recently seen a similar accident in London where a man, much younger than him, was struck in the same way. Poor bloke died where he landed, in the street. But what luck. Our victim had come to the States to try to reverse his financial troubles. Having lost most of the family fortune in the 1929 economic downturn, he had hoped to find new opportunities in the U.S. His plan? Hitting the lecture circuit with universities and communities who might appreciate his views on world politics, his adventure during the First World War, and in the British government. But this man was lucky to still be alive. However, he was not going anywhere for several weeks. He was stuck in a hospital. And though he wanted to, he really couldn't go anywhere or do much of anything. So he summoned his assistant and proceeded to dictate an article about his misfortune in New York City. He promptly sold the article for a tidy sum. And during his months of recuperation, he continued to write and successfully publish books and articles. While his body healed, so did his fortunes. Winston Churchill, the future wartime prime minister of Great Britain, was fortunate to survive his unpleasant encounter with New York traffic. Now, pausing for just a moment, might I pose this question? What if he had not survived? Being struck by a car could have abruptly ended the life of a rare and unique leader before fate called upon him to lead a nation in crisis. Without the rugged direction of Winston Churchill, how would Britain have fared in the Second World War? So, here's the ends. It seems things in time work out the way they need to. Churchill stated it this way in an article about being run down by a car on a dark night in New York City. There is no room for remorse or fears. If at any moment in this long series of sensations, 
I felt immediately after being struck, a gray veil de deepening into blackness had descended. I should have felt, or feared, nothing additional. Nature is merciful and does not try her children, man or beast, beyond their compass. For the rest, live dangerously. Take things as they come. Dread not. All will be well. End quote. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, you're still here. If you enjoyed this little story, please take the time to hit that subscribe button. And share this little gem with your friends. And why not discover several of our other additional fascinating episodes? Thanks.